Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Dr. Sid Cowley and I work at the intersection of Fusion and AI at FIA member DigiLab Solutions. Today is Wednesday the 2nd of April and I'm here to give you your Fusion News Roundup. Stories today include 1. U.S. firm unveils world's largest 350 megawatt Stellarator Fusion power design basis. 2. Commonwealth Fusion Systems achieves a key reactor construction milestone. 3. Marvel Fusion secures 113 million euros in Series B funding. 4. Focused Energy and RWE plan a 1 gigawatt fusion pilot plant at Germany's former Biblis nuclear site. And 5. Thea Energy hits milestone in quest to simplify fusion. 1. U.S. firm unveils world's largest 350 megawatt Stellarator fusion power plant design basis. Our first story comes from Interesting Engineering and introduces us to an impressive new Stellarator design concept unveiled by U.S.-based fusion energy startup and FIA member Type 1 Energy. So for anyone unfamiliar, Stellarators are magnetic confinement fusion machines that are kind of like the more elegant cousins to tokamaks and they are very famously easy to operate, making it feasible to run continuously without the constant worry of instabilities that can constantly challenge tokamaks. Now this story covers the fact that Type 1 have published a design for their Infinity 2 Stellarator plant in a series of six peer-reviewed scientific papers in a special issue of the prestigious Journal of Plasma Physics. The design is for a plant producing 350 megawatts of electricity with a quasi-isodynamic stellarator around 12 meters in radius. The papers show some really great detail and cover loads of different aspects of the design, from plasma stability to tritium breeding to the pesky confinement of fast alpha particles, a key issue with previous stellarators like the Wendelstein 7X in Germany. Now, one interesting aspect of this power plant design that Type 1 seem to be focusing very much on is the commercial aspect. After all, Type 1 is already practically planning the delivery of this plant with FIA affiliate member, the Tennessee Valley Authority, or TVA. Christopher Maury, CEO of Type 1 Energy, said the physics basis for Infinity 2 is grounded in the knowledge of what is required for application 2, and performance in the demanding environment of reliable electrical generation for the power grid. Now, for those avid watchers of Fusion News, first of all, thank you. <laughs> and second of all, you may remember me getting really excited in a recent episode of Fusion News because the FIA member Proxima Fusion released the first detailed design of a Stellarator power plant. And now, Type 1 Energy have gone and done the same. And this makes me incredibly excited because it cements Stellarators as a technologically mature and credible commercial path to fusion energy. Two, Commonwealth Fusion Systems achieves a key reactor construction milestone. Our second story today comes from TechCrunch and features FIA member Commonwealth Fusion Systems, or CFS, who've announced that they've reached a key milestone in the construction of their Spark tokamak. Now, as a reminder, CFS are aiming to build Spark, which will use high temperature superconducting magnets to confine a fusion plasma. And these HTS magnets allow for smaller, more efficient devices, dramatically reducing the size and cost of fusion machines compared to conventional larger tokamaks. Now, the story today is that CFS has just successfully installed a critical component, the cryostat base. The cryostat base is an impressive structure, measuring 24 feet wide and weighing a staggering 74 tons. It's made of stainless steel, and this giant circular piece forms the essential foundation of the tokamak. It was manufactured in Italy before being shipped halfway across the world to CFS's facility in the US. Alex Creeley, director of tokamak operations at CFS, emphasized the significance, saying it means we're transitioning into a new stage of the project. We're now building the actual tokamak itself. So the Spark tokamak is scheduled to come online in around 2027. And if successful, it could be the first tokamak in history to achieve net energy gain, producing more energy from fusion reactions than was inputted into the plasma. 
To date, only the Department of Energy's NIF, or National Ignition Facility, has achieved this scientific breakeven, with its landmark experiments first succeeding in December of 2022. So it's exciting to see Spark taking shape, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of Tokamak construction updates to watch out for in the coming months and years. Three, Germany's Marvel Fusion secures 113 million euros in Series B funding. Our third story comes from the Financial Times, announcing that the German startup and FIA member Marvel Fusion secured 113 million euros in a Series B round of funding. This substantial investment comes from significant backers such as EQT, Siemens Energy, and the European Innovation Council. Now, Marvel Fusion, rather than taking the more well-researched magnetic fusion path, is focusing on laser inertial fusion, where fuel is heated and compressed by an array of high-energy lasers. Even more uniquely, Marvel is aiming to make its fuel targets not from the typical frozen hydrogen, but with a solid boron hydrogen nanostructure. Now, this recent funding round seems like it fits well in this German landscape. After all, Germany's chancellor in waiting, Friedrich Merz, is an enthusiastic supporter of fusion research, stressing during the last campaign that Europe must not leave the field of fusion to China. Marvel Fusion CEO Moritz von der Linden told the Financial Times, Marvel Fusion with this round is the best funded laser fusion company on the planet. So it's really exciting to see that European fusion firms are growing and attracting significant investment. And perhaps this investment will take the company one step closer to its end goal of a prototype plant by 2032 and commercial operations by 2036. Four, Focused Energy and RWE plan a one gigawatt fusion pilot plant at Germany's former Biblis nuclear site. Our third story is another piece on laser fusion but this time it covers FIA member Focused Energy and their collaboration between RWE and the German state of Hesse. This partnership aims to build a one gigawatt fusion pilot plant at the former Biblis nuclear power site by 2035, with costs projected between 5 billion euros and 7 billion euros. Focused Energy is aiming to use advanced solid state laser technology, aiming to achieve unprecedented efficiency and reliability in inertial fusion. CEO Scott Mercer underlined this effort, saying this initiative could provide a partnership to advance fusion energy globally amid considerable technological and logistical challenges. He told Reuters this would be the beginning and the learning lesson towards building a supply chain for what would eventually be global deployments. Now, as you know, Focus Energy is one of a number of laser-based fusion companies, and their approach involves using a focused proton beam. Now, this story is exciting to me for two reasons. First, it's always great to see collaborations between private fusion and the wider industry. And second, it's really exciting to think about deploying fusion and how that exists with current energy grids. It's a powerful indication that fusion technology is maturing, paving the way for clean energy to power society. Five, FIA member Thea Energy advances Stellarator magnet technology. Our final main story today is reported by Heatmap News and focuses on FIA member Thea Energy. Specifically, it focuses on advancements in Thea's superconducting magnet. But first, a bit of context. Thea is a fusion company focusing on the Stellarator approach, and Stellarators typically need quite complex twisted magnets to achieve the twisted magnetic field structure needed for magnetic fusion. However, Thea takes a radically different approach. Rather than using a set of magnetic field coils which are really complex in shape, Thea uses a large array of many simple planar magnets, which are very finely controlled to achieve that twisted magnetic field shape. It's a bold, unique approach, but because of that, these planar superconducting coils have never really been tested for fusion. Until now, that is. The announcement from Thea Energy was that they had tested an array of high temperature superconducting planar coils cooled to roughly 20 Kelvin. And these coils successfully showed that they could generate stellarator relevant magnetic fields. Brian Burson, CEO of Thea Energy, highlighted this critical progress saying, we've dramatically improved our manufacturing capabilities and precision. 
Even small improvements in magnet accuracy can significantly boost Stellarator performance. Our first bonus shows an image of the new Chinese Laser Ignited Fusion Research Facility in Minyang, Sichuan Province. The facility reportedly 50% larger than the United States National Ignition Facility really underscores China's ambitious commitment to fusion energy research. For the second bonus story today, we have our own Fusion Industry Association's CEO, Andrew Holland, who recently participated in a webinar hosted by the International Atomic Energy Agency. It's well worth checking out. During the session, Holland presented key FIA reports, including the 2024 Global Fusion Industry Report, the 2024 Supply Chain Report, and the Fusion Workforce Report. So if you haven't seen the webinar or read the reports yet, they're all available on the FI website and definitely recommend checking them out. Right, well, that's all for today's Fusion News. Thank you so much for joining us as always. And if you enjoyed this update, please feel free to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more Fusion News. Until next time, thanks for watching.